worry for Tali because Tali has not been on his best in his best behavior and on, on, on he's been under the weather quite honestly he has had shingles and so uh, I volunteered so you, you have me today and our our um, lesson this morning is give us daily bread but before we do that, let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and pray. Father God, it's been a <clears throat> it's been a long week. <clears throat> There's been a lot going on. I pray for Tolly, and I pray for um, and not only for his physical well-being, but it's for his family too, Father. Uh, pray for Vivi, and I pray God that you just bless her and help her, and um, just pray God that you just uh, cover us this morning with your your grace. And uh, help me as I as I minister this morning and preach and pray God that it would just come through and that your word would shine in Jesus name I pray Amen. So we've been talking about the Lord's the, the Lord's prayer or the the um, sermon, on the sermon on the mount. It's not going. Okay, maybe I'm not hitting it right. Is it on? Yeah, it's on. Tolly, show me. There we go. There we go. All right, so this is a Sermon on the Mount. And um, this lesson we're going to talk about today is called Give Us Our Daily Bread. Hit the other one. Hit the other one. Ah, there we go. Give us our our daily bread. That's what it was. It, was my, it, was, it, was, it wasn't It was. It wasn't. anything. I didn't do it. You didn't do it. <laughs> So it's the Sermon on the Mount, and it's just, remember, it's a model prayer. And this prayer is just asking, um, his disciples came to him and says, well, you know, teach us to pray. And that's what he was, that's what this prayer is, the, the model prayer is all about. And we can glean from that. We can help from that. We can get some information about that, that we can um, kind of, dig into it okay so <clears throat> a little boy was asked at um, Sunday school what is prayer and his response was asking God for stuff that's pretty typical you know that's what we that's what we do sometimes okay but it's more than that okay <clears throat> What is prayer? Well, let's find out what it is not. Okay? Prayer is not about informing God of something he doesn't already know. He already knows it. Prayer is not a means by which we get what we want by somehow manipulating God, but rather the nurture our relationship with God. Notice the, na the main point there is the word relationship so it's a two-way street we can ask we can ask God for certain things we can ask God for anything right is there anything that God doesn't want us to have as long as it's what in his will right okay so what is prayer prayer prayer's proper purpose might even be a change in us rather than simply a change in our situation. To reinforce our confidence in God's sufficiency and realign our will with his. And I think sometimes what happens is that we get out of, we kind of get out of sync a little bit, okay? Sometimes we just kind of like, um, well, we treat God like Santa Claus. Sometimes we just kind of like go right to the, you know, right to the very beginning and say, this is what I need, which is okay. But there's a proper sequence in this model prayer of what we should do first and then go to God with our requests. It says, you know, we're to honor God. We're to honor his name, and we're to submit to his will. That's really important, okay? So sometimes 
I feel sometimes as Christians, um, if we don't get an answer to prayer, we feel that God has abandoned us or God doesn't care. But the thing we have to understand and remember is God has our best interest at heart when we pray. And if we are praying for his will to be done, guess what? That may take a while. That may take a while. But here's the beautiful thing about being a Christian. We can go to a God. We can ask God for what we need. And God says, oh, okay. Here's what I request from you, from us. And it's really hard to get through this because quite honestly, folks, I get anxious. How many of you get anxious? <laughs> you got the human nature. But here's what God says. God says, don't be anxious about anything. Anything. In everything by prayer and supplication, and here's the key, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known of God. So is there anything that we can pray for that God doesn't understand? God understands everything. But it's our human nature to be anxious. And folks, there's nothing too big for God. Nothing too big. Even, even with Holly's shingles, there's nothing too big for God. It's nothing too small for God. And God wants the best for us. Amen? Amen? He wants the best for us. So don't be anxious in anything. And you know what? It's okay to pray about that. It's okay to give God the glory and the honor and then say, God, I'm anxious. I am anxious. I'm frustrated. I'm, I'm, I have angst. It's okay to ask that. And then it's okay to ask for peace. Right, Tully? Yeah. Yeah, it's absolutely. It's okay to ask for peace. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, God wants that. Okay? But our request should include our need for provision. Give us daily bread. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Our need for pardon. Forgive us our debts. And our need for protection. Lead us not into temptation. So as we as we break down the Lord's Prayer and we break this down and we talk about it, I want to keep that in mind that you have at, at, in, in, in the proper way of looking at the Lord's Prayer. Give us daily bread, our need for pardon, and our need for protection. The nature of our request. Bread is a provision for the present. This is from John MacArthur. I like this. It's really good. Bread is the provision for the present. Forgiveness is the provision for the past. And God's leading is the provision for the future. That's really, that's really good. God wants us to understand that there's the, there's the past, there's the present, there's the provision, and there's the future. And as we as we delve into this lesson on giving daily bread, we should understand that God wants us to ask for daily bread. He wants us to ask for protection and providing for the past. And he wants us to lead in the future. That's what, it, that's the, again, this is the model prayer, okay? But here's a lawyer's request <laughs> for bread. This is really good. This is not for me. This is from this is from somebody else. We respectfully petition, request, and entreat that due and adequate provision pr to be made this day and the date hereafter. Subscribe for the satisfying of these petitioners' nutritional requirements. Whoa! I kicked it off. I'm sorry. I kicked it off. 
How do I kick it back on? I don't know. <laughs> oh, here we go. The quantities of baked cereal products shall, and in the judgment of the here for said petitioners, constitute a sufficient supply of, of thereof. Does it have to be? <laughs> does it have to be complicated? No. Nola and I experienced this. I was new. I was a new Christian. Well, within nine years, anyway. And uh, we attended a we attended a a Christian church in Fall Creek, Oregon. Beautiful, 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 absolutely beautiful. It was on a hill. It was an old school. There was a meadow. And there was a river running out, and there was all kinds of horses and cattle and stuff like that. It was just amazing. Anyway. Talking about flowery words and stuff like that, it was one of the elders. Now, there's nothing wrong with with King James. I don't not say anything about King James at all. It's just an opinion. <laughs> okay, um, when he would pray, he would pray in King James. And there were some things that I had to ask Nola about because I wasn't versed in the King James version of the Bible, and I had to ask her. Right, I had to ask you what they were talking about because I. Didn't have a clue, okay? You but, wondered what betrothed me. And the lady said, Lord, please bless these that have been betrothed. And I couldn't. I didn't know what betrothed means. Anyway, the idea there is that, you know, it was okay to do that because that's what he felt comfortable with. But I had no clue, okay? So God doesn't really care one way or the other what kind of words we use. The the idea is he wants that relationship with us so that his kingdom can continue to grow. Okay? And that's what we're going to talk about today. Give us bread. There's two words in the Greek that are talking about bread. One is wheat and grain and meal and bread. And the other one is artos, which means bread in a broader sense or food or staple or sustenance. That means just like, you know, you need certain things to grow and you need certain things to, uh, you know, to sustain your life just other than just bread, okay? And remember, though, in the context of what we're talking about in the Lord's Prayer, it's talking about kingdom. And God wants us to be able to be used in the kingdom so he knows that we need sustenance to continue to grow and to continue to ki continue to go so that the kingdom can be enhanced and the kingdom can be growing. Okay? So the first one is just wheat, grain, and bread. That's just the normal thing. The other one is sustenance. Okay? And when I think of sustenance, we're going to talk... It, when I think of Israel, I think of bread. That's the that's the the sustaining, you know, main food in in Israel. When you think of Chinese, what do you think of? Rice. Okay. Uh, Italians, it might be spaghetti. Okay. In Mexico, it might be tacos. Okay. Who knows? I mean, there's all kinds of different things, right? In Bob and Nola's house, our sustenance is cheese. Peanut butter and coffee. <laughs> got to have the coffee, right? Okay. And <laughs> I got you. Okay. The idea is that it's, that it's, you know, that God wants us to know that he is taking care of us. And when you pray, it's okay to pray for your food. Not just at mealtimes. When you are in your closet and you're asking God for protection, you're asking God for sustenance, it's okay to ask for that. Okay? He wants you to be able to have enough food and sustenance to continue the kingdom. That's the key. Okay? But it's not bread alone. Man shall not be lived by bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. I like that. In a sense, prayer for bread is a prayer for a partnership with God. You ever think about this? 
God gives the grain, but the work is required to make the bread. So we have two things. God provides, God provides, but we need to be working towards the kingdom. He's going he's to give you what you need. He's going to give you what you want within his will. But it's a partnership with God. We ask to be in God's will. When the grain is made, when the grain is put out there, it's required that bread is made. Right, ladies? You just can't cut the, you know, have the grain and just sit there and hope it makes bread, right? The idea there is there's a partnership. God does his part, we do our part. That's what I think is important in our Christian life. God does his part, we do our part. Our prayer art is for bread, not donuts and cake, unfortunately. But for, not for luxuries, not for necessities, not for our greeds, that's not a word, <laughs> but for our needs. Okay? So when you pray and you ask God for help and you ask God for the daily sustenance, it's okay to keep praying for the right thing. That's what this key is about, okay? It's not just for bread. It's not for it's just not for bread. It's just, it's not for our luxuries. It's just daily sustenance. The application is pray for what is needed in life, so that we can continue doing God's will, and that the kingdom should move forward. Now, remember, in the context of the Lord's prayer, "Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done." All right. Our part is doing God's will. He wants us, he wants the disciples, he wants us to do his will. Is what is needed so that we can continue doing God's will and that his kingdom would not would move forward. <clears throat> so let's get into the lesson today. About bread. Give us this day our daily bread. This day means today, okay? Now, daily is what is necessary. That's another, another word, okay? What is necessary for the day or for the following day or tomorrow. It's only used in the Lord's Prayer. So those two words, that one, that one daily. And it comes from the fact, again, if we remember con contextually, he's talking to his disciples. They're Jewish. When he talks about the daily uh, for what is necessary, I believe he goes right back to the book of Exodus. I remember, this, remember the, uh, the beauty of what God did for the people of Israel. Manna. Okay. <clears throat> the word manna means what is it that's the what the, what the word manna means what is it they didn't see it they didn't know what it was but god said here i'm going to provide for you okay the lord said to moses <clears throat> behold i'm about to rain down bread from heaven for you and the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day that i may test them and whether they will walk in my law or not Morning by morning, they shall gather it, each as much as he could eat. On the sixth day, they gathered twice as much bread. Now, why was that? Because it was the Sabbath. Because it was the Sabbath. That's exactly right. Okay. Now, here's the cool thing about that. Guess what? It's exactly what they needed. No more, no less. They tried to hoard more than they wanted. Guess what happened? It went bad. A whole bunch of worms would come in and, and eat it up. They got just what they needed. No more and no less. There wasn't any reason to hoard it. 
Because the next day, God would provide for it. Put yourself in that context. Do we go out of our way and maybe make plans and stuff like that that maybe we don't need to make? Do we hoard things? Do we gather things that we may not need? Don't know. But the idea here is this, is that God provided for the people of Israel what they needed. No more, no less. And that's important for us. We need to develop, I love this, we need to develop a dependence on God's resources daily. So when we get up in the morning and we're asking God for provision, we put him first, we ask for forgiveness, and we ask for daily needs. Guess what? No more than we need, no less than what we need. Because God knows exactly what we need. Two things I ask. I love this. I had, I had forgotten about this verse. Two things I ask of you. Two things. Remove far from me falsehood and lying. Give me neither poverty or riches. Feed me with the food that is needful for me. Lest I be full and deny you and say, who's the Lord? And, or at least be poor and steal and profane the name of your God. He's asking us to remember to pray for our daily needs. Neither poverty or riches, but what, just what I need. And I will admit to you that this week has been a tough week for Noel and I. We've been anxious. I'm just being flat out honest. My son Kenneth, and we're, we're sharing this with you because we need to do this. My son Kenneth is a homeless person in Texas, okay? <clears throat> He's in a facility. He, he passes his, 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 paper, his paperwork and stuff like that. They put him on a bus. He decided to go to Portland. We don't know what he's going to do when he gets there. We don't know. We don't know where he's going to go. We don't know what any facilities there. He doesn't have a jacket. He doesn't have a backpack. He doesn't have a sleeping bag. He's going to one of the He's going from one of the warmest places in the United States to one of the coldest places in the United States. That was his choice. But his parents, and he's 34 years old, his parents, we've been anxious. <laughs> we've been anxious. And so what we're doing is this particular verse of Scripture has been a blessing to Nola and I this week. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on, is not life more than food? And the body more than clothing? I love this, this is so, this is so beautiful. Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more than valuable than they are? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? It's hard sometimes. <laughs> and when you are anxious about clothing, consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his glory was not an arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothed the grass of the field, oh, well, I did it again. Your heavenly Father knows, get this, what you need them all. Food, clothing, and shelter. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. 
and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious. Lord, but I am. <laughs> I'm anxious. Put it at the foot of the cross. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious in itself. Amen? So what's the application for that? Daily prayer is for what is needed in life so you can continue doing God's will and his kingdom will move forward. That's the most important thing. So how do we go about praying for that? Okay, how do I know when I talk about God to, to God about that? Okay, she has her prayers, I have mine. Okay, when you go, when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us sustenance. Give us what we need. It's okay to pray for what you need. It's okay to pray for the things that are necessary. It's okay to go to your room and lay it out at the cross. And there's also a part for corporate prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. Okay? Okay, here's, our, here's, here's, the, here's the differences between our culture and God's culture, okay? Culture says we should never ask. American culture? Does that sound familiar? <clears throat> we should never reveal weaknesses. We should never give, strive to be self-sufficient. We should strive to be self-sufficient. We're strongest when we're we're strongest when we're strongest. <laughs> we're painstakingly planned for tomorrow. Nothing wrong with that, but don't get caught up in it. And here is the what Christ tells us to do. We're to ask of God. We should reveal our, reveal our weaknesses to God. And you know what? God already knows. But he wants us to communicate with him. He wants us to let, us, to let him know where we're coming from. We should strive to be God sufficient. We are strongest when we are at our weakest. And why is that? Because we're relying on God. It's not our own strength. Okay? We should plan, but understand that we have no idea what tomorrow might bring. There's nothing wrong with planning for the future. Nothing wrong with that at all. But don't get caught up in it. Daily pray for what is needed in life so that we and others in God's kingdom can continue doing God's will and his kingdom would move forward. No more, no less. Daily dependence. Daily dependence. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us what we need to sustain what we do for the kingdom of God. Give us what we need. Give us the, give us things that we don't have to be anxious about anything. That we can be just putting it at the foot of the cross. Now remember in the context in the prayer Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. He wants us to fulfill the kingdom call. But how do I do that, Bob? Talk to your neighbor. Talk to the person in line at the grocery store. Talk to the gas station attendant. Pray for the martyrs across the world. Pray for yourself that you would be able to have the ability with God's help to share the gospel daily. 
do I have to preach a sermon? No. But I'll tell you what. A thankful heart is really important. Giving God credit is really important. Allowing God to work through your life and asking for the daily things that you need is okay. There's nothing wrong with that. But here's the deal. God wants us to communicate with him. He already knows what we need. He already knows that. He already knows what we need. But he wants us to communicate with him so that he keep that line of communication open because you know what? He's like a dad. He's like a daddy. And guess what? Daddies want to be able to give to their children. And that's what God wants to do for us. He wants to do that for us. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for giving us just a little glimpse of how much you love us. We do ask God that you'd uh, uh, take those anxious thoughts away from us, <laughs> that you would um, just um, help us to focus on uh, our daily needs so that the kingdom could continue and that we can share and to you know and and to give an opportunity to that's within us to share the gospel it doesn't have to be big it just has to be we just have to be willing to be able to do it and want to do it I just ask God that you would uh, uh, would bless the rest of our morning and thank you for for answering prayers about my son Kenneth. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So we come to um, the Lord's Supper. Um, I think it's important, I think it'd be important today to just give thanks in your, in your, in your quiet time. Give thanks for what, for your daily bread, for your sustenance. And you know what? That Jesus dying on the cross, we didn't deserve it. He didn't deserve it to go to the cross. But he did it for us. He did it for us. That empty grave. That empty grave. He did it for us. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful for that grave. Amen. I'm thankful for the cross. Because you know what? It could have been me. It could have been me in my sins. Thank you, Father, that we had the opportunity to come and to think about who you are <clears throat> and what you did on the cross. What you did on the what you did in the grave, and that you overcame, you overcame the death on the cross, because <clears throat> you said you're going to. I ask God as we uh, as we think about uh, our daily needs. Um, I just thank you, Father, that you provide for our needs, and that we have necess the necessities of life. So many people in the world don't have that. So many people in the world don't have Jesus. Help us not take that lightly. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. As the message, as the song um, plays, you can go ahead and take the uh, communion and uh, just take it to your seat and enjoy. It's gluten-free. Oh, it's, okay, thank you, it's gluten-free. Thank you.